Hey everyone and welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. Uh, so today I wanted us to get our battle widget set up and also get our um, uh, the ability to run. So last time we played we was able to pick up our um, ring mod and put it into the party, our first slot of the party. Um, if I, I've set up so that I can delete my party save by pressing C, and this will essentially wipe the save for that information. Um, so let's pick up a new one. Let's pick up Oster instead and um, head into the grass. Um, so this is my battle widget. Um, I've got it so we have the name, level, um, health bar and experience bar. I've also got the creep, the enemy's name, health bar, and level. And on the right hand side, we have the attacks we're going to be coding into this. We'll obviously set something up for the inventory. We've got the party, and we also have the ability to run from the battle. So if I click run now, it's already set up. Nothing else has been set up at this point in time. I'm still working on all of that. But um, yeah, we can now uh, run from a battle. So, first things first, let's have a look at how I set up the widget. I mean, you've already, probably already got a good idea just from seeing that battle take place. But we'll open it up anyway and have a little look. So, where is it? We've got our battle widget. Um, and it's very simple design. It's just, uh, I created this image in paint in like 30 seconds. It's just a white sort of rectangle with black lines going around it. I've done the same for the buttons. Um, and I've just placed in them the name, progress, two progress bars, one for health, one for uh, experience. And I've got this, and that says 100 on here at the moment, but I'll show you that in a second. I've used a, an append essentially. Uh, same for this, the so same set, no experience bar, because uh, encounters don't have experience at that time. And then we've got these four buttons. Now there are four hidden buttons. So if I unhide these four um, items, I was just setting up um, kind of like a couple of random items just for us to test when we come down to like the capture side of things, which will be very soon. Um, if we go into the graph, so um, for the run, all I've done is literally um, got player controller, set the input mode for to game only uh we've set the show mouse cursor remove the widgets and open the level um when we open the level so if i bring up the level blueprint um on the event begin play we've just checked to see if there is a party slot available if there is we load that party slot 201, we cast to the party save game, and all we're doing is we're casting to the third person character to set the ring party uh, with the, the capture party it saved that's in the, the save file, the player location, the player rotation, and we're setting actor relative transform. Uh, I have also set up the camera, so just so you know, while we're here, I'll do this as well. Um, so this is how I kind of set my camera up. Now, I always want my camera to face this direction. So what I did was, um, if I get my third, oh, I, I think I already had it open, blueprints, and get the third person character. We, um, I basically wanted to set um, the uh, ability to have the camera set up when the player spawns in. Now this only works when you start from a player start location. Uh, for some reason this doesn't actually work when you just spawn in randomly somewhere in the world. So we get the follow camera. So on our first ever setup we can do this. Now all I did was I found where I had my follow camera set up here. And I copied these values into this set relative location and rotation. So I'll always set them to this. 
Um, and then all I did was like, once I was happy with where the camera was, I just transferred it over to the, the Corn Wallington persistent level so that I can run on event begin play, run a second, a cast of the third person character, get the follow camera and reset it to those coordinates as well. Had a lot of trouble with this for some reason. It took me a little while just messing around to get this. Um, but now you should have your camera always set up to this direction. So you can now world build knowing that your camera will always face this direction. Uh, you could have it, that it changes direction if you want to, but realistically there's no actual need to. But, um, well not for me anyway, because I'm quite happy with how this works. So a lot of my world will follow from this perspective. Um, so as you can imagine, in the original games, everything kind of faced one direction. That's kind of how it will be for us as well. So you need to kind of bear that in mind when you're planning out world, well I will anyway have to work out how to plan that into my world build when I'm building, especially towns more than anything, more than routes. It'll be the towns that you, um, you struggle with, or I will struggle with. But anyway, so that's how I did the camera. Um, and then back into the battle widget. So yeah, that's what happens when you run. It just has to open the level. We don't have to save anything um, at this point in time because when we're running, we're not we're not we're not saving anything. We're not capturing anything. We're not using items. Now, eventually, I might have to do that when I've got an inventory because if I used a health potion and I was like, "Nah, I want to run now," I might want to save inventory. Um, and you will probably want to save your party health information so there will be a save in here eventually after the run or, or just before the open level on the run but for now not too worried about it now as for the button uh, the inventory at the moment I've got set up is just those extra buttons um, for now so um, this will completely change this is all for testing purposes at this point um, but I will re completely change the inventory setup uh, down the line. Um, and then we've got our on event construct. So this is what happens when we load in our battle widget. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to load in our party. So we cast a third person character, we get our ringmon party, and then we're breaking it down and getting the specific information we want to show on screen. And for us, that is our name, our XP, our current XP, uh, divided by our max XP to set that um, percentage bar. We want our current level. Now, this is where that thing came into play. So I've got an append, um, which I've just put in there level dot. And what this does is it automatically will always put the level dot in there. So again, if I go back to the designer at the moment, it just says 100. And it will always put level dot in front of that for me. I won't have to I don't have to have an extra text box in there for that so that's really really helpful um, I might even carry that over to our party uh, widget as well so yeah so I'm just grabbing that information from our party info and on our basic info and our final stats to set this information in here then on the second string we're casting to the third person character again now to be perfectly honest if I wanted to make this code that little, someone mentioned in the Discord, you're, you're, I'm casting to the third person character a lot. Could I not do that through a tick event? Tick events are very expensive, and if I do tick events to cast a third person character for every time I run, uh, for every place where I need to grab it, now that's useful uh, in the short period because um, I want, I might want to get that information on the fly. But the problem is, is if I keep running more and more ticks down the line, so for example, if I ran a tick on my battle widget, on my player, on the creatures, on the accept Pokemon section, uh, you know, and the more things I add, like the encounter, so every encounter I add, I add a tick in there as well. It gets very, very expensive. So running a third person character a few times is, is probably, uh, more cost effective when it comes to running your system but having said that now I could do this so I could at the start here 
plug this in in here instead. This is just one way you could get around. Now it only works for um, running this um, this event, of course, uh, and it will only run on the. Um, oh god, what am I doing? Primitive variable. That's what I wanted to do. Uh, this will only run on the construct, so it's only going to be useful for when I'm running the construct. But uh, so if you wanted stuff from like, for example. Um, have I done it anywhere else? No, I haven't at the moment. But if I was to run it somewhere else down here, I couldn't use this in this scenario. But for now, I could now get this and plug this in here instead. And uh, it just gets rid of that little bit extra code. Um, so now we just plug that straight into there. And we can just put in a little break node there and run it along like that. And it just gets rid of an extra cast and the same thing for here we can just get rid of this cast now so we're only running one cast instead of two but again it doesn't matter because it doesn't run them at the same time it just runs them one after the other so it, it really doesn't matter if you have uh two of those going on uh, and that's the setup to the battle widget at the moment uh, and again sorry as i was saying come off this one we're getting our current ringmon so that is our encounter ringmon that we set in the encounter BP, that's the current ring mom we're dealing with at this point in time, and we just do exactly the same thing. We break that, get the the ring mom build struct, we get the basic info, the final stats, and we plug them in as we need to, um, and this should work exactly how we want it to. Do. Um, yeah, and that's everything that I've got in here so far and if you go to the the map that we want the um go to maps go to no 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 go to map go to battle let's get our grass battle level save and um we can come down here and we can open up the level bp and what we want to do is, um, I think I've done it down here, yep. So where we spawn in our player, all I'm doing now is uh, creating the battle widget after we've spawned in the character. We add it to the viewport, we set the U input mode UI only using the player controller and we show the mouse cursor. The reason for this to be UI only mode is that if I click play now and I try and move around, my player won't move around anymore. So he is well and truly um, stuck where he is, and that's why I've done that. Um, if I click on that inventory button, by the way, th what that that code was doing was just showing and not showing this. And eventually, again, just for the testing purposes at this point, I'm just going to set up our cartridges, which is essentially our pokeballs, to. Um, allow us to capture some creatures and, and um, test it, basically, test this whole system out. Um, yeah, and that's that's how I'm going to be doing that. So that's uh, kind of a little sneak peek into um, what we're going to be using to capture our creatures. We're going to be using cartridges in this game. Um, that uh, Again, my concept idea is that you have a ring bracelet which stores six creatures in at a time in their cartridges but you have a, a, a seventh slot that you would stick a new cartridge in and you would attempt to capture that creature within that cartridge uh, it fires the cartridge out um, at the uh, creature and captures them <clears throat> um, and if you're successful it either goes into your ring you, you plug into your ring or um, it goes straight back to the boxes um, using magic <laughs> uh, and you can kind of open and close that as you will as, as you like um, there's no need for a back button with my setup at this point um, which is kind of how I wanted it um, I will probably set up uh, a bit of a left uh, a right menu sorry um, down here and then move the Oster thing over to here so kind of focus the battle to the left hand side of the screen and have a sort of menu on the right hand side of the screen is what I'm kind of thinking of going for and I haven't set the attack yet but if you click on the attack it will do exactly the same thing as this and bring up the four options down here for you to use um, a, a move 
inventory eventually will probably be like this but it'll be a scroll you'll be able to scroll up and down the um, the box and it'll just create a list of items that's my plan for that party again will be just a list of the other members in your team um, so if we have slot three here it'll check to see if slot three is active and only load in slot one two three four and five and you'll be able to make a decision on what you want to do and then we can run and if we run we load in i need to obviously set up some loading screens i've also changed the area look so let me know what you think in the comments whether you think it looks uh, better or not um and of course i've obviously moved everything around to make it look um a little just a little bit tidier really i guess i've added some bushes in you also probably noticed as well that i've updated the battle arena as well um just giving it kind of all these bushes and this grass and it just looks a bit more natural um i probably want to tone down the backing a bit maybe darken that up or something i'm not sure but um but yeah i just wanted to kind of make it look a bit nicer but um yeah hopefully that's helped you out with the battle widget the next thing to do now is um sort out our tms sort out um um we've got a load of other stuff we got, we're still going to do our battle stats i think in the series we're going to do battle stats tms We've got to do uh, XP gain information. Um, I've also set up the shiny system on here. So there you go. This will actually technically be a shiny. Uh, if you ever look at this, that's it says tail flame. That should be her badger. That's because I just stuck that in for it shiny at this point. Um, so if I said yes to that, actually, let's just say yes to that. This should actually show up shiny. Let's see if this works. <laughs> but I'll show you how to do that in the next episode as well. Um, yeah, I also need to set up a world save as well, so that, um, oh, I didn't shut shiny, no, why, that's broken, okay, that's fine, I've just worked that out, so I need to fix that, <laughs> it shows me shiny on here, but it didn't set it as shiny, that's kind of interesting, and now I can't, because I already have a Pokemon, but if I click on this, party, ah, so this doesn't actually update either, interesting, well, it, that was set up as shiny, but okay, it's fine, but thank you so much guys for watching, well, there's obviously some stuff to fix, but, um, yeah, thank you so, so much, and uh, I will see you in tomorrow's episode. Take care. Much love. Bye.